What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five, my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking through today's Friday slate. It's a big one. We've got a lot of weirdness, and it's going to start for, for me from, from, from the very beginning because uh, we've got teams with no players left and, and, and very, very speculative value that could easily go different directions. Um, the, the Heat only have, I believe, 10 guys dressing as of right now. That could change by later, but I don't know. It's it's we'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, and 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 of those ten, only seven actually have like played minutes this year. <laughs> like, so it's it's kind of weird here. I have to give you an idea of what the slate is like. Yeah. So so Miami, and we'll get to this pretty quickly. But Miami has no players, right? And my top value from the Miami side, point per dollar, is ranked eleventh on my list of values today. That that's that's how that's how sick this slate is with, wow. with all these other guys. Did so you we'll, update we'll, it we'll after talk. Jimmy Butler was announced out? Yeah, I got all these guys. You know, I got I got these Caleb Martins and these and these Duncan Robinson, Gabe Vincents. We'll we'll talk about all this, but yeah. we, we'll talk about some other games. Maybe you didn't uh, get into as much, so we'll 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 see. No, I I don't want to be in this. This is this is where I feel lost. I I mean, as of this time, this look in the morning, like I mean, we'll get into some other plays, but. Duncan Robinson is 3,200. Jovic is 3,500. And they really don't want to play Jovic a ton of minutes. They just still, I mean, he's very, very raw. And the other night, and it's pretty funny how quickly everybody went to hate Mo Bamba and how Jovic is this incredible, oh, obviously you play Jovic over Mo Bamba instead of Mo Bamba as your value play and all this stuff. And Jovic played 23 minutes. Mo Bamba ended up playing almost 30. And Mo Bamba, they basically were with almost the exact same point per minute, <laughs> um, point per dollar. Mo, Mo Bamba had zero real life points in the first half and eight fantasy points and went to the locker room. And I was like, you've got to be freaking kidding me. And when you, how often does a guy go to the locker room and then come back? Like never, right? Well, never. He, he like, came back, Anthony Davis who goes to the locker room every right. game. But. He came back and got there somehow, you yeah. know? <laughs> so uh, good for, I have nothing bad to say about Bob for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, and, 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 and Look, anyway, so let's let's talking about this one. Okay, so Miami side is is something we're gonna have to figure out because as of right now, I kind of think you have to play somebody for you have to play, and this is a big slate, some at least one player from Miami, possibly three, <laughs> you know. Um, I've got you know four guys projecting at six X, and I'm having trouble deciding which ones I want to go with. I think that the natural thing is is probably to Caleb Martin is gonna get a ton of minutes anyway. It's a good game environment. He's not like generally a huge shot creator or anything, but he can do all the things on the court. He's put up 30 in back-to-back games anyway. Take Jimmy Butler off the court in addition to that. So I think Martin is probably my favorite in, in terms of what I, we can expect. Duncan Robinson is, I mean, look, he's 3,200. He should get minutes tonight because these other guys just don't play enough minutes. It's a good matchup. So I, he would, I guess, be my next guy, but that feels weird. Gabe Vincent feels a little weird to me. Max Struss, I, th- I could see that. I could see the Max Struss being, being, the, being the one. Um, and then you have Kyle Lowry, who is 6,600. So I, I'm just really struggling here. And you get another game where you really don't need to start Deadman because you don't need to play a big against against Porzingis because he stays on the perimeter for the most part. And may, maybe they will start Deadman though. That's something to keep an eye out for. Um, but I, yeah, I sort of I, I guess I have it in order: Martin, uh, Robinson, Lowry, Struss, Vincent. But I think you're probably playing at least one or two of the heat as of right now. Um, again, more value might open up, but this is, I mean, you take away Tyler hero, Bam, Duncan, Rob, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, all off the court. Somebody's going to have to, there's, there's going to be fantasy points scored here. There's going to be a number of guys who seven, eight X their price. So I think maybe, at, you know, as of right now, I would go probably at least two, maybe three of these guys. What, what are your, what is your take on the Miami well, side? First, first thing I, I, I want, I know it's just something kind of to point out for the future. Mm-hmm. About, about the Dwayne Dedman play, especially the especially the Dwayne Dedman play from uh, from from last time, even though he was coming off the bench or whatever it is. So uh, listen, this is this is what they call a uh, old, uh, old man's take. Okay, so let, let me tell you, uh, you know, there's some injuries that that you can overcome, and some injuries that really suck. Let me tell you something. I and my wife have had plantar fasciitis in your foot. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Sucks. There is no, I am playing no player who's questionable due to plantar fasciitis that plays like ever again. Okay. Yeah. Um, especially a guy who's kind of, you know, listen, he's not exactly a spring chicken. You know what I mean? Right, right. 
So, so uh, that that that's all I have to say about that. Um, as far as today, um, I'll just have to say that we're gonna wait and see the way the projections kind of kind of pan out. Because right now I have all the guys that you mentioned as kind of kind of good plays, but I don't really have them at least yet in the seven eight x range. But again, this is this is a very fluid situation. This kind of you know, I I, I like the Denver guys like much better. Like yeah, you have know. you have these guys yeah. definitely lower projected than I was ready for. Um, yeah. So, but but I listen. I I have an update. Maybe I, I'm I'm slow to update a couple of them, and I'm I'm actually going to fire off another another set literally while we're doing this. So maybe mm-hmm. uh maybe things will change. And this is without yeah. I mean it's it is yeah, interesting because you've got nobody above thirty fantasy points on the team, and only a couple guys over twenty or four guys over twenty. It, just, it doesn't seem to make logical sense, right? Yeah, I just can't figure out how how that happened. I mean, I'll run it again. I've I'll seen run. weird stuff like that happen, but but it is weird. And, and may, maybe what your account, maybe what your you know your things are accounting for in some ways is the fact that I mean Miami probably will play these Jamal Kane, Hayward Highsmith, Orlando Robinson. These guys are going to get minutes because there's just you can't you can't play in the NBA without having like you know nine guys play in a regular season game at least. Um, so yeah, it's a really weird situation. Um, are you, I like would anything? say, by the way, this is like yeah. really kind of like behind the scenes, like content stuff. I'm actually going to predict as I, as I just redo this, the most likely explanation is not what you said. The most likely explanation is just that one of my settings was screwed up. Um, and mm-hmm. then I just get to, we'll, we'll, but we'll see. We're literally going to see in about 45 seconds. Okay. It, well, interesting because this is, this is a game. I think that as of right now, I think you'd want to get right in. And it's really, you know, it's interesting to try and think about a potential run back if you're going to make like a four man stack. But I think and I think if you do, it's probably Porzingis, who's been awesome. Um, But I don't I don't feel great about anybody on on the wizard side while you're running your thing real quick uh, or while you're if 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 I did have to play a wizard, it would be Porzingis or Avdia, who is sort of like, is this is this finally, you know, midway through season or early through season three? He's maybe finally finding himself and actually shooting the ball a little bit. Like he's put up 30 and uh, two out of the last three, he's put up 26 or more, four in a row. Um, I'm not going to do it, but I'm just throwing it out there as if you're going to consider a run back. Cause I think there's an argument to playing like four heat in some lineups. Okay. So as you suspected, actually, as I suspected, and as you mentioned, um, I wasn't incorporating one of the models in. Mm-hmm. So now that I reran it, yes, the Miami guys do show up as better as right along the top. So I do have not at a seven A's, but I do have Duncan Robinson now at like more like 22 fantasy points, which is closer to seven X. Yep. Abe Vincent would be my next guy over six X. And then I have, I do have the Jovich guy next. Um, and then after that, Caleb Martin, but, but yes, they definitely rate instead of below 11th. I now have them first, third, eighth and 10th. So yeah, right. Right. They definitely did look better. Yeah, and 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 I think that sometimes the thing that people forget to do in these positions, and and it's sort of showing that way today, is that no one wants to play Kyle Lowry. Now I'm not excited. Like if it was Tyler Hero or something, you know, playing instead of Lowry or something like that, I I, I can understand it. But I, I do think that Lowry should be considered here. Like they're gonna they need guys who are creators. There really aren't that many on their team uh, without Butler, Bam, and and Hero. Their three best creators are not not playing. So I think Kyle Lowry is is actually probably the the lower owned guy who i'm who i might have more interest in you, you know you know what's a good way to handle like these these value uh teams I, I felt is that let's say I'm, I'm pulling up my sheet now and again this could change i don't care if i show people this every once in a while one of the things that that bobby asked me to do like like a year ago was make one change in that um suggest that maybe i add minutes to the to the sheets here and normally i wouldn't do it because what i like to do is i don't like to 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 double count stuff. In other words, like the stuff that's in the projections is like underlying stuff, like minutes, um, usage, things like that. So I don't like to double count to show the fantasy points as well as the, the underlying stuff because they kind of like overemphasize certain pieces. But what's cool about this is that when you look at a projection, you can see kind of what minute, what kind of minutes th- that projection is based on. So that if you can come up with some some take where you could figure out like whether there's upside or downside from those minutes, mm-hmm. you know, cause you listen, you don't want the median projection anyway to be the results. You know what I mean? Like you want to get higher. So you have right. to figure out where you're going to get upside from the projection and the, you can either get upside from what, from efficiency 
or from uh, or from uh, usage or from minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of hard to even have a take to how much more efficient a guy is going to be. And it's kind of hard to have even have a take how much more usage a guy is going to be that's not already within the projection. But you could have some kind of at least feel for whether that minute projection is either low, right there, or kind of high. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like to do I look at these guys like you'll take Gabe Vincent. I mean, for example, I don't even know this is right, but you might think 32 minutes seems like a pretty yeah, seems like a pretty full projection there. You know what I mean? Like how, how many more is he really going to get out of thir from 32? Um Again, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I would probably say that if you had to, if there was a four minute, you know, band there, I would say it's more likely he plays 28 than 36 or something like that. You right. Know, and, I guess that's and fair. You, yeah. And, and like, and like you, you could do the same thing with other guys in these type of value ranges. Like uh, um, we'll get to some of the other guys, but uh, what do you think about Duncan Robinson? What do you think about 27? That sounds somewhat reasonable, you know, but, right. but that's one thing that I do when I put the minutes up here is so that people can kind of eyeball it and say, well, which of these guys really, I think that, that minute projection might be a little thinner. Which one do I think might have a little more upside? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's weird because also, I, I don't think there's any lock at Duncan Robinson starting today. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's, that's even accurate to project him there, which is where he's being projected, but I could see Gabe Vincent easily starting and then people maybe a little less on Robinson. Cause I think he's going to be really popular and it just feels wrong. But at the same time, look, somebody's going to have to shoot the ball and, and all these guys can shoot, but they don't create at all. So it's, it's really weird. I think Caleb Martin and Lowry are your safest plays. And I think Duncan Robinson is your, uh, is your value that, that if you don't have him, might kill you. <laughs> and Jovic would be the next one for me. What's the over under in this game. It's probably pretty low, right? Two fifteen and a half, I think. Yeah, two to two sixteen, and then I mean, and Wizards are five and a half point favorites. I mean, this could be the stupid, you know, obvious side, which I usually don't like to take. But my, Miami's got like got no scorers. I mean, and if anything, Miami probably at least is trained to play defense. So yeah, seems like a low scoring game to me. But yeah, know. I would I would I would initially definitely guess the same thing. Um, yeah, it's it, it's really weird where the team is at as much as I think you're you're playing at least as of right now. I I, I'm, I might I might switch over to. to well, one or two for right now because we've got a lot. We got a lot of games to go through, <laughs> and it's an island game too. As the the first start at seven o'clock, which is never fun on a on a big slate. So just to remind you, I mean, let's let's put some of these guys in. So, so Gabe Vincent, um, Duncan Robinson. Uh, who 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 others were your, your favorites here? Uh, My favorites like are not Gabe Vincent. Um, it's oh. I like I like the idea of going Lowry because of the ownership and the fact that he, that somebody's got to create. Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin is probably my favorite. Um, and one of the and even, or, even he's questionable. Yeah, but he's gonna play, I think. Oh, he plays questionable plans. every day, and they just he's, he's not yeah. I haven't actually as probable, um, which usually is a good to go. And I don't know how I mean they they almost we're, we're getting near forfeit territory or or, or whatever the, the thing is right. if they lose any more any more guys. And Caleb Martin, what you love about him is he's gonna play like 40 minutes, like he plays a million, million minutes. And it's just hard when you're on the court not to do enough things out there. And he and he can he can do some things. You know what I mean? He he'll get a few assists. He's a good rebounder. He gets blocks and steals. Um, but as of right now, that's how I've got it. I've got the priorities as some form of Martin Robinson, Lowry, Jovic. But then I'm including Stress and Vincent also in my mix. So I, I'm going to be playing a lot of uh, a lot of these guys. Um, just not all together probably. But but I all might right, even so do that. So right. let's 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 welcome everybody to to Theo Maladon season with uh with no uh with no uh what's his name no Lamelo and no uh Dennis Smith Jr. Um, I imagine he's going to start at thirty nine hundred. I don't uh, think he'll start. You don't think so? No. Okay. They have Terry Rozier still. I mean, we right. saw well, the same thing happen early in the year with them, and and I don't think Maladon started a game yet. Um. Okay. To my knowledge. So I, I would bet you, and, and, and Gordon Hayward's back also. Well, he's showing up for me at six X, which is, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty nice. Um, uh, I guess the more logical, like you said, would be, would be Terry Rogier. Um, but he's not really showing up as anything, uh, as anything special. Is he, has he not played recently? Why am I not even, um, there he is. I mean, he has 7,900. That's probably why. It's not really projecting all that great. So I'm not really getting really too much in Charlotte. 
but you probably you're supposed to, right? With 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 Lamelo out. Well, Lamelo is out all year, and we've seen these guys, and they've been I priced guess. like this, and nothing's happened. I guess. Um, so so, I, but I do like Theo Maladon, and uh, on Cleveland, um, J- Jared Allen, I guess, would be my top guy. Um. Yeah, this is a weird. I, I have zero interest in Maladon as of right now. I, I didn't even. Oh, okay. didn't even cross my mind. Um, it's interesting that you got him that there. Like Saberson has him at like like at sixteen fantasy points. Um, okay. And and if there was one guy, I was I would probably play off the bench in this game. I mean, of course, if he starts, everything's all bets are off. I mean, then 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 I'm in I'm, I'm in more interest. This is a game where I could see Nick Richards being play, playing a lot, and he would be a wild card one fifty max kind of a play. But I don't think you need it. There's just other good value. Um, for some reason, Sabersim has this as like a five point spread and you've got a, it's, it's, I think it's a nine and a half point spread in real life. I, 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 this feels like a game that should be all Cleveland. I don't have any real interest in this game from a DFS perspective. I have everybody basically as just fine. Okay. Plays. Um, I don't mind the idea of Terry Rozier, but I think my favorite play on Charlotte would be PJ Washington. Um, he's, he, you know, he's, he's been really good and he's playing a lot of minutes. He's consistently in that 30 range, but I I just don't know if that's the right kind of play on this slate. So I've got Washington as my only Washington or Rozier as like a, eh, maybe I'll get to that at some point, but I don't really love it. It's a terrible matchup. And then they priced up the guys for Cleveland. So it's going to be kind of tricky. I, I do think Jared Allen would, could have a good game here in this, in this type of type of environment, but I just think I'm going to probably end up passing. Okay. All right. What do you got for uh, Milwaukee and Philly? Or is that, is that yeah, for Milwaukee, Philly. Um, Milwaukee and Philly. So, are, are, are both these guys playing or or Ooh, a holiday? Yeah, let's holiday. See I'm holiday's I'm, being I'm get, well. I'm getting. I'm, I'm getting him. I mean, Embiid and Giannis. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I get him. I get Embiid as one of my top plays on the slate. Um, and uh, I have Giannis as very really expensive. So I like, uh, I'm getting to Embiid right now. Um, Mm -hmm. What what else, what else is there in this game? Yeah, I think Embiid and I think you could make a, I mean, against a team that allows threes, I think you could make an argument for Tyrese Maxey because we know he's got that super, super high ceiling. Um, I mean, he'll he'll go out there and chuck it like 15 times from three if he needs to. Um, So he's, he's mildly interesting, but I like the Embiid play. Really, it's just Embiid for me as a priority here. But I do think Giannis at low ownership, especially with the value out there, maybe maybe even with Holiday coming back, I think that maybe you could you could argue for Giannis. I wish Holiday was a little bit cheaper because if he was coming back, going back to Philly, he's had some big games there. Um, that's his old, you know, or, who drafted him and everything. Um, I, I really think it's just Giannis and Embiid as as guys who I really want to look at. But really, Embiid is the priority. Um, it would be fun to play a Giannis Embiid lineup and just sort of hope that you know. You get 150, 180 points between them, or something like that. 160, something like that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not as, uh, I'm not very into this game from a DFS perspective either. All right, what do you got next? You got the uh, the Orlando and Chicago, and this one is, I, 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 this is like a, it's a nine point spread, and it feels very much like it could, you know, Orlando. I always worry about the blowouts on the road, especially Palo's out still. We got the good Jalen Suggs game the other night. They didn't really raise his price. Um, and, and, and I think that, you know, the, again, that's, that's, that's the, for me, that's the guy who I would uh, probably go back to. Uh, and I think that he's going to have fairly low ownership. So you're going to have Carter back, but I, I don't mind Suggs still. I think that he's taken a more, more of an offensive role this year. So Suggs would be my favorite. Um, and then on Chicago, Somebody's going to get there. Um, Drummond feels too thin on, on this kind of a slate to me, but we're getting to, to, to cheapo pricing for DeRozan, Levine, and Vooch. And I think all of those guys, and I will say it is Vooch's former team. Maybe if he was going back there, I mean, he's nothing to be angry about or whatever, but I still, I, 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 we need to calculate at some point, but I feel like still these guys going back to their former, former against their former teams is kind of interesting. And, uh, yeah, one of those three, but I, again, I think if I had to pick one, it would probably be Levine. Um, but Levine and DeRozan, I think are both strongly in play. I think I like DeRozan better for games where they really need him to go nuts. But so I guess, I guess, long story short, I like Levine in this game as my favorite play. Um, and I like on the other side of it, if I had to pick one, it would probably be Suggs. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, and you win a car to going back to Chicago, but I, a little too expensive for me. Yeah, I mean, Levine would be my f- – boy, oh, boy. Levine and, and Vooch both look really cheap. Um, sp- special is that right? 7,100 for Vooch? Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't – he certainly doesn't project all that great, but I don't know. It's, it just seems – it seems cheap. I don't know what to tell you. It's not like it's not like Shaquille O'Neal's on Orlando anymore. You know what I mean? Like right. it's uh and then Drummond, like you said, at 30, 3,800. Maybe not, but maybe. Uh the, the, that's I, a blowout run too. I think one of those two is gonna gonna do it. You know what I mean? Like I think what I think one of those two is gonna pay off six X. Let's put it that way. Okay. I like that. I I, it seems seems to make sense to me. I don't know. So those are the two guys I like and uh and I do like Levine, as as you mentioned. So Levine, Vooch, and or um, DeRozan. DeRozan, yeah. Um, no, I didn't. I really didn't get to DeRozan. Oh yeah, I'm just throwing it out there that I think I, I yeah I think I, it's just with the Bulls seems like one of those guys is going to six x every night. But All so right. so we have the two freaking superstar studs going to get going after each other in this game. What are you going to do with this? I mean, I, listen, I know I'm going to enjoy it, but. Yeah. Um, can you play it? You know, like uh, at, at least at least both these guys are kind of price where they're supposed to be. You know what I mean? Uh, although I could say that Shea is probably still four thousand too cheap, but uh, <laughs> but the, these are these are the two dudes, man. This is these are the this is the future. You know, Shea, Shea and Shea and 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 Ja. I don't know where exactly the future lies for Shea. You know what I mean? Um, but. These, this is going to be kind of an exciting game. Um, Shea certainly looks like a good play, as he always does. Ja looks like a good play, as he always does. Um, and everybody else in this game, well, hold on. I got two possibilities. Uh, from the Memphis side, I showed Jaron Jackson being not the worst play in the world at 5,600. And then a, a real ugly one. I show Aaron Wiggins not being the worst play in the world at 3,200. So I have two bad plays that maybe aren't the worst plays in the world, uh, aside from the two studs. Yeah, I actually think that the, the top play in this game, and certainly ownership wise, will be Josh Giddy. Um, I like that. I think he's going to be popular, though, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I have him at like 14% right now. Yeah, I think he's going to end up getting a little more love. He's just a, an insane ceiling for a guy at this price in a good game environment, uptick, uh, a fast paced game. I do think Memphis misses Bain a lot, and that means more Ja Morant. So I'm going to put Ja as a priority as of right now. As one, I mean, look, I'm going to have too many priorities to start the day, but SGA and Giddy, uh, SGA or Giddy on the other side. This value for OKC, I'm just going to remind everybody, it's pretty much on large slates, almost always wrong. I mean, like you've got different sites and, and why they're predicting it is going to be some based on recency stuff and all that. And with, with OKC, they're like the worst team to try and predict recency bias on because you really have no idea what you're getting. Like, is it going to be 15 minutes, Kenrich Williams or 20 minutes, Kenrich Williams? Is Aaron Wiggins going to play 30 minutes or is he going to play 10? Like it, it really could go any which way. Um, the one guy who's, who's sort of been, you know, who was, who was getting minutes off and on and nobody's more this way now that, you know, in the last four games than, than, than Poku. Poku played 14 minutes the last game, 37 the previous game, 18, 23, 39 before that. He put up 40, the times where he played over 30, he put up 43 and 47. Um, call it a wild card play, but I think he deserves to be in the mix. Uh, it's just, it, you're just playing roulette though with these guys. So may, maybe this is the wrong slate to do that. Jaron Jackson, I just don't trust they're going to play him that many minutes coming off the injury. Too many injuries, too, 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 too serious situation. He was three for 14 and took a lot of shots the other night with a 29% usage rate or 28% usage rate. So, so maybe that's enough to get him there, but how much of a ceiling can we put on a guy who might only play 24, 25 minutes? That's my only fear, but I do like jaw and I like SGA and giddy on the other side as the main, the main news. It should be a fun one, by the way. That's, a, that's a, I agree with you. That's a, that's a, it's a really fun little pairing to have, you know, cause if it goes, if it goes nuts, so um, you could really, you could really be going places anyway. Indy and Houston. What do you what do you got here, Sheets? Um, Jalen Smith at five k. Uh, uh, I got a couple of gross ones. I have Eric Gordon at four k, and then 
Just wow. J- J- <laughs> yeah, right. J- J- Jalen Green at 6,500. But uh, how about Eric Gordon at 4K? I haven't played him since the Eisenhower administration. <laughs> that is a that is a, certainly an interesting one. Um, this for a game. This is a, a just a skyrocket total of 236 and a half. Like just a absolute blazing game that I can't find anybody I like in except for the guy who's always a great play at Halliburton. Um, right. But then you get into Halliburton and he's close enough in price with with SGA and Jaw. And do we want to do that? Um, so I, I, I don't know. I, I have Halliburton as the only guy who I'm, I mean, the Jalen Smith projection, that's fine and all well and good. I don't know how real any of that stuff is. Like it could just as easily be Isaiah Jackson. If this was a small slate, I would just say, just play the lower owned, which would be Isaiah Jackson. And the weird part is that because he's coming off the bench, I think that like, like zero ownership on Matherin, his minutes have been a little bit in flux lately. Hasn't had the thing. I think he's an interesting large field tournament play, but not not probably for the smaller field, uh, you know, high buy in stuff. And then I just I just don't have, you know, they Indy's done a pretty good job against bigs. Um, so I'm not going to play Shangun. I think that Turner is certainly in play in this kind of a matchup, and he's getting a little bit overlooked. Probably he's probably a better play on Fanduel usually, but he's 7800 over there. 73 is a little bit more than we're used to playing for Turner. But this is a, the kind of matchup where he could end up with a 2020 kind of a game and and all that. So. I have Turner on my list as a possibility, but it's a great game environment that I just can't get to from a DFS perspective. Maybe this is the, maybe, maybe you could talk yourself into this is where Jalen Green scores 40 real life points or something. Um, that's, 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 you know, Green, I guess Green is the, my secondary to Halliburton if I had to run it back, but, and then I, I have a little bit of interest in Miles Turner, but not all that exciting outside of Halliburton for me. You speaking could, of, speaking of teams with no players, um, so Denver against Dallas. So now we not only have no Jokic, but now we also have no Jamal Murray. Um, yep. So I currently have Bones Highland as the highest owned projected player on the slate uh, at 37% ownership, which corresponds to his point per dollar projection of six and a half X, not to mention just the overall fantasy points that he's projected for. Um, in addition to that, I, I'm getting not any ownership, but I'm getting a six X projection out of, out of one of the very few players that have two ends to start their name, uh, if Zeke Ninaji, yeah. um, and then dropping down, I mean, there's, there's, you can play the Deandre Jordan thing again, if you want to do that, but it would seem most logical to just go play Michael Porter Jr. If you want to know the truth, but, but, I agree with you. but, but, but Bones Highland is the one that's going to like just pop for everything. But what, why don't we just play like a very, for, for some reason, poorly projected Michael Porter Jr. Um, I don't know what this projection is. He had a terrible about. game. The, like literally, I mean, I cashed like in 40th place or something in the big one that night and he had 11 fantasy points. He has plenty of terrible games. So what? Yeah. I mean, you know, I agree. Um, oh, coming off the 11 with 42 the week before the day before that mm-hmm. in only 24 minutes he's, he can't only play 24 minutes today yep yeah I'll, so I'll, okay I'll, so this I'll, I'll play that this this one i'm, I'm playing that that's right yeah and keep an eye out for what happens with aaron gordon um because aaron aaron gordon is projected to be out as well so again which the guy and it's it's weird because it's off the bench but he just always gets there he don't didn't play that many minutes the other night he only played 21 minutes but Bruce Brown, I, I like in this spot. He's put up, he's, you know, he's putting up, we put up 29 in the last game, 35 before that, 43 before that. And those were with players. Now he gets to possibly play the 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 small man, you know, Dwight Powell ain't scaring anybody. Christian Wood, then he'll probably match up with the Najee and when while well, he's in the game. Um, but I think that I think Michael Porter Jr. and Bones Highland, I think you're playing one of those guys for me in most of my lineups. And if you're not playing, and I think you can throw one of those guys along with uh Bruce Brown. I think that's totally reasonable on this slate. And um, I, I I really like Highland. I I don't think I'm going to get to Nanaji or or DeAndre Jordan just because I don't really need to. You can, you, I think DeAndre, look, DeAndre Jordan going back to Dallas, who kind of had a, the failure, the, the, the start of the failure of his career. Um, and then, I mean, I would include more guys here. I just think there's a lot. Of, I think the projections are not really giving these guys enough love. And it's partly because Aaron Gordon on Saber Sim has a projection 
Uh, you don't have him projected. Say, Roto Grinders doesn't have him projected. No. So it's very hard to figure out what to do. Right. With the, the rest of these guys, my guess is that Michael Porter Jr. is going to look like an incredible play by a little bit later. And will people be sour because the last game, if they are, uh, I won't be one of them. So I, I like the idea of at least one of Highland, <laughs> Porter, and Bruce Brown. I don't like this as a game stack, and it's a really bad matchup for them because Dallas plays slow uh, from a DFS perspective. But, uh, you know, I, I like the, the only thing I would say for Dallas is I, I even with Luca back and everything, I would take I always willing to take a shot on Tim Hardaway Jr. because he can get hot. But I don't think this is the right the right game to do it. And I don't think I can get to Luca at 12 seven compared to the other guys. But it certainly wouldn't surprise me if Luca is the highest scoring player on the slate. So maybe I need to revisit. I, I'll put him on my list, but I just like the other plays at 10K a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, I might be tempted to play like three, three Denver's with Luca just for fun. Mm -hmm. Um uh but in, in, like in the in the abstract i mean you can't you can't really pay 12 7 for Luka. you could get the the mavericks from last from the last years and you could play uh three of the heat with uh with uh porzingis and three of the the, the, the what's it called denver with uh with luca you get right. luca and porzingis as the runbacks at zero percent ownership right right um kind of like that idea actually all right so you got uh you got phoenix next right yeah no uh oh. i have boston and, and oh that's my fault all right, Boston, uh, go ahead, Cheats. And in that game, I, I I don't have much. I have Tatum is just kind of a cut below, like a cut below Embiid, a cut below Curry, a cut below uh, Ja, you know, just – I wouldn't say a cut below. I mean, he's, I have him very similar to Ja. Um, pretty good game environment there as well uh, on the road, though. Um, I guess it's fair. I guess it's fair, fair for tournaments. Um, New Orleans uh, – no, I mean, not really anything. So for me, may, maybe if Tatum just kind of shows up in kind of a random ramp pivot or a random MD pivot or whatever it is, um, I'll, I'll keep him in. But that's pretty much all I have from this game. Yeah, I think this is a really, like a really good real life game here. Um, Boston is, is I'm so impressed by them. I'm really, really impressed by how good they've been. Um, if Zion's out again, I will take a shot on Trey Murphy because I'm so mad at myself the other night for what I did. And I'm playing Trey uh, Nance over him because it cost me at least like 50,000 probably. Um, he went nuts and he only played 25 minutes in that game, but he had, you know, he had 19 points, 10 boards, he had three steals, he had 44 fantasy points. He's got a ton of upside, this guy. Um, anyway. Um, and, and then I think you consider Ingram and, and uh, McCollum, especially Ingram probably if there is no um, Zion and if there is a Zion, I don't mind Zion and, and Jalen Brown. Um, but I, I, right now it's too hard to know without Zion. And even if he's out, maybe, maybe not don't want to go there. The one guy who's going to, who's just been, you know, terrible lately. And it's usually, it's mostly been due to weird foul trouble than them playing better with him off the court and stuff like that. And that's Joe Val. But if, if Zion is somehow out again, um, which I'm assuming as of right now that he's in, I think Joe Val hasn't really had the big Joe Val game in a while. And, and maybe against Horford and these older guys who just aren't big enough to guard him. I think that maybe Joe Val could be in play if, if Zion's out, but mostly this is just an if Zion's out game for me. And then if smart and, and uh, what's it called are out again, um, Brogdon, but right now they're projected to be in. So mostly a stay away, but it should be a good real life game. So guess what? What's Never that? believe this. We're going to go talk about Phoenix, Utah right now. Guess who's projecting well? You're never going to believe in a million years. <laughs> <laughs> it is indeed DeAndre Hayton. Um, yeah. He projects very well. And he's yet, yet to get there the whole season. <laughs> it's literally, really not literally not. the whole season. And the only so, time he kind of got there was against the best defenders, uh, the, the two teams that are best defensive against the center position. So try and figure that one out for me. <laughs> like, yeah. Makes no so, sense. um, no thanks. Um, the one thing I would say is is that is that it's a very uh, barren range that that six k range uh, for centers today. Um, even even Turner got like a price bump. So the only guys in that range are really him and and, and Jared Allen. Um, uh, whatever that's worth. I mean, because I mean, I mean, Aiden's got to be a better play than Sangoon, right? So, so um, that's that's the one thing I would say. Yeah, but um, it's definitely a really fast pace matchup for Phoenix um, playing Utah. It's amazing the way that's happened, right? Um, 
So if in fact, uh, what's his name? Uh, Chris Paul remains out. I, I do think it's a really, really nice spot for Booker. Um, 9,400 is very, very, very full for a price in general. But I do think that if this game gets to where I think it can get, uh, yep. I, I, I think that he could, I think that he could have a really, really big game. So, and I, I don't think anybody's going to play him either. So uh, I definitely like that. And if Chris Paul, and, and what are you going to say about Cameron Payne, by the way? I mean, the guy just does it. He's, he's awesome. He's awesome. He might be, he might very well be the starter in the playoffs. If, if Chris Paul is, continuing. by the way, I, I've actually been watching them play and believing that that actually could be the case. Um, yeah. I don't think they'd start him, but like he might get the more minutes. He might be the closer. And by yeah. the way, they could play all three of those guys together if they want to. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if I can get to him at 6,800. Um, but it would have been fine last time. <laughs> 47 fantasy points. Yep. Uh, three games before that, 46 fantasy points. I mean, that's, 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 perfectly fine at this price um i'm not getting to anything on the utah side i guess just because they're all kind of fairly priced so for me it's just maybe a, a tournament shot on booker or maybe it maybe maybe a tournament shot on cameron yeah i, I want to throw something else out here for you because of this game environment i think that like I think it's time that we start changing perception about M- Mikhail Bridges. I mentioned it a few shows ago. I was thinking about that. This guy's put up 50 or more, two in the, two out of his last four games. Um, when these guys have been out, he's been, I mean, he's on the court for 40 minutes. It's Utah who goes up and down. You have steel block upside. Yeah. Um, you can, you know, again, I, I Booker's my priority. Payne is number two. If, if there's no Chris Paul. Um, and uh and Bridges is number three, but but so solidly in there. He's he's a guy I'm gonna I'm gonna get some exposure to. I'm thinking Chris Paul's gonna be out, so I'm I'm into this. Um, and I do think that that Kelly O on the other side against his former team, familiarity and practice and all that. He was their back. Kelly Olynyk Kelly Olynyk was on Phoenix. He was on Phoenix before, yeah. Okay. Um, but but you know, and and it's not the most exciting play, but he would probably be my favorite my favorite of the uh, of the Jazz. Uh, also don't, I don't think I would get to everybody else just looks like a good play for a small slate. Like we could have used all these guys who were going to get like five X last night, but there isn't anybody who stands out as going to be doing it much more than that. Um, maybe you can make an argument for Mike Conley. Um, but I, I'm not all that excited. I guess Jordan Clarkson's always in play because he can go off, but I don't think that I don't want to do anything on the Utah side. Just too many bodies right now. It's weird to say that about Utah, but it's true. Boy, Bridges was 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 just a smidge away from a triple double. Yeah, and he still. I imagine he's never had one of those, right? I mean, no, I don't think he has. I doubt he's ever had one in his career. Twenty three, nine, and nine. Wow. Yeah, and and I mean, and you look a few games before that when he put up thirty one, and and you think, oh well, he was five of eight from three last time. You can sort of chalk that up to whatever. But when he was two of six the the other time against Minnesota, and in, in, in another game that was really fast paced, he put up he had thirty one points. He had four steals. He does a lot of different things really, really well. And Phoenix is so impressive because of their continuity, the way they share the ball and everything that I could definitely get behind playing some Phoenix here. I, I'm on board with this. Um, this I just wish I had somebody on Utah, but I, I, I have Booker, Payne, or Bridges uh, as another priority for my lineups. All right, New York and Golden State. Uh, this is... <laughs> This is, you know, we talk about the games that are played at a pace and everything like that. This should be blistering uh, with the way that that uh, New York's been go- with the, the, I'm sorry, the way that both these teams have been playing. And and honestly, the well, the Warriors just don't play defense. Well, like, well, let's let's start with what it is. First of all, Cam Reddish. Now that's more like it, this last game. That that's what what I was that's what I was looking for. That's 37, looking for. 37 minutes, nineteen fantasy points. Right. That, that that's 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 more that's more like it. Um, uh, yeah, you're right that it could be fast paced. And then then after the end of the first half, when the game is over, we'll talk about <laughs> what's going to happen in the second half. Let's I think I, I have to tell you, I think you're still overrating how bad the Warriors are in right now. Like, I think okay. Like, okay. they are. They, I mean, they, they've really they've really, really, really struggled. They've been really good at home for what it's worth. So I guess you can say that for this one. But their defense is atrocious. I mean, Steph Curry is having to play out of his mind just to keep them. He scored 50 points the other night. They weren't even in the game. You know what I mean? And oh. I don't know, man. This is a this is a weird one for me. So I, I really want to play some of the New York guys. I, one of Barrett, Brunson. I think Barrett's my favorite just due to pricing. But I like Brunson in this matchup too. So I, I'm just I'm just for right now, I'm writing down, and, and I like quickly. 
um, one Nick as a priority. <laughs> um, I just don't know which one yet. And they are so weird with their rotations and whatnot. And every time there's foul trouble, Jericho Simmons keeps coming in and having these monster games. Um, I don't know. It's it, it feels like a game you really want to get exposure to. But I'm not like, especially, especially with the Knicks, that excited about any individual play. And I am going to be the sucker who goes right back to Clay Thompson. And I will have some Steph as well. How about you on the, that side? Uh, well, first of all, quickly, uh, Rates is a pretty good play. Um, 4,400. Uh, Cam Reddish, just because of the minutes, he's going to project, you know, five, six, five X or so. Um, but again, it's the ceiling's rough. I'm not getting to quite as much, quite enough of Randall. Um, as far as Golden State is concerned, uh, I, I just, I think that just Curry is just, just very live every game at this point. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so I like, uh, I like uh, Curry and it's pretty much it, you know, and, and I, if, if I'm not going to play Randall, right. If, if, uh, well, it's so funny. Like this is the way my, this is the way the brain operates. I'm like, I really don't want to play Curry unless I'm playing like, like, like the, the, you know, the real Knicks, you know what I mean? Um, then again, if I don't like the real Knicks, maybe I shouldn't play Curry, but I like thinking about it the wrong way. You know what I mean? Like may, maybe I should like kind of force in like a kind of a shitty projected Randall so I can play Curry um, because the combination of Curry and Randall, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think people are going to do that. Um, Agreed. Uh, quickly is going to show up in some, you know, some pseudo optimal sort of, you know what I mean? Uh, so he might get it like 10% or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's not really like a, a juicy play for GPPs for me. You know what I mean? Like I, mm-hmm. so I don't know. I'll probably end up, we're well, probably getting to a curry. Like, you know what? Getting to a, to a random curry was what, you know, got me, got me a good, good, some good results in the fadeaway the other day. I, I didn't even realize I had him. And yeah. then it ended up scoring what it's would you say 50 real life points or something like that at four percent ownership, whatever yeah. he was. Um, and that's you listen, that's that's the curry of this year as opposed to last. Like last year he had no ceiling the whole season. Um, and this year it's just a little different. And coincidentally or not coincidentally, last year Golden State was like the best team in basketball. This year they suck. <laughs> it's like it's, uh, yeah. uh I shouldn't say they suck, but yeah, they, well, they, they have they're, sucked so far. They're struggling to get it going, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um I'm not quite getting to Thompson yet. But I'll continue to root for you as you continue to to, to play it. That's, yep. Uh, and just I guess can't, we- I just you can't shoot thirty percent every game, man. And he still gets there. That's the thing that's crazy. He gets he five X's. He always looks terrible at first, and he gets thirty fantasy points while shooting like six of eighteen, six of nineteen, six of seventeen. I mean, these are his shooting totals. They, they, he just shoots thirty percent every game. That cannot happen forever. Sorry. End yeah. So so now we have. Uh... I guess we have revenge from when the, uh, the Pistons swept the Lakers back in like 1989 or whatever that was. Uh, in the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, injured injury to Byron Scott didn't help. That's right. That's right. In the end, um, LeBron, a, a true questionable tonight. Oy. I don't know what to do with this one sheets. Um, I'm not like right now. I mean, I get, it doesn't matter right now because yeah. whatever I'm not getting it. I'm getting to look to the Davis. I'm getting, this is why I look at it. I have Davis as kind of an okay play with LeBron in. Um, so if LeBron is out, I have to believe that he's going to be an excellent player. Um, mm-hmm. Is he a good as good a play as Embiid? Um, no. Good question, right? I, I I think that that maybe because he's the last game. Is it is it worth? That's the thing. Is it worth not playing Embiid? hoping that Davis kind of opens up. But like, as you're saying, even if he does open up, it might not even be as good of a play as, as, as right. the beat anyway. So maybe we shouldn't worry about playing a beat for the sake of Davis. If that makes, makes any sense. Right. Um, it is, it is definitely a really nice game for LeBron to sit. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that Lakers have <laughs> Lakers not a lock over anybody right now, but uh, right. Right. Any win, any win is a big win for the Lakers. Yeah. Um, is, I, I also think that well, if 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 Cade's still out, um, listen, as we learned from yesterday, you have to you have to check to make sure who is starting this game. But I will say this: that if uh, this is really funny, Jay Nivey did not start. He played thirty eight minutes. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I now I remember at the nine and a half minute mark of the first quarter, he was in the game. 
Yeah. Literally the nine and a half minute mark. So I don't know what they, they benched him for like missing a meeting or something. You know what I mean? And they did kind of like a, a, a token. You're not starting thing. If we're just going to bring him after literally two and a half minutes, you know, it's not like we're going to practice with you. I have, a, pre- I have a pretty heavy prediction on what happened. Go ahead. I think that he was partying because his first time in LA. Right. Like something before. like that. Right. That's, that's what I would imagine happened. And they yeah, were a little, be. little punishment, but then he came in and he took 21 shots. Right. That could be. Yeah. So, uh, so this is, I can't believe I'm even asking this. They play at the same stadium, right? Yeah. So back by the same stadium. So, uh, I, th- I think he's going to shoot another 21 shots. Um, and, uh, I think, it's possible more of them go in. I think it's definitely possible that more of his threes go in. Yep. Uh, and I think he's a really, really good play. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I, I, I like the, I, I don't mind, I don't even mind Killian Hayes, by the way. I know it feels weird, but I, I've just been a little bit encouraged by the way that he's actually played. He's just so low usage. It kind of throws me a little bit. You're not getting a, a high enough ceiling, probably like 35 is your, your capping out kind of. So I, I don't know if I'm going to go there. I'm interested to see if Detroit does anything because Bagley coming off of coming back from an injury, playing him on a back-to-back seems like maybe not a great idea. Um, so, and I'm also curious because they haven't, they haven't, they, they skipped Alec Burks on the other back-to-back that they had. He didn't play. So if he's out, that would open up things for Jaden Ivy even more, but we probably won't know that information. And mm-hmm. by the way, the, 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 also with the Lakers is Dennis Schroeder should be, should be available to go tonight. He which, still plays basketball, huh? They've been, yeah, he's been, wait, they've been waiting for him to come along. And what's weird is he's really going to help them. I know it sounds crazy. They just need guys who can create shots because um, right. they don't have any. I mean, it's it's really Westbrook and Davis and even those guys, like they don't create the way that they, well, especially Davis doesn't really create the way that he used to. The assists are just non-existent for him. Um, should be a big rebound game though for him, whether LeBron plays or not. I probably will speculate. I'll put it this way. If I had three big lineups, I think initially I'd probably put Davis into one um partially because i like some of the later stuff and i probably that if i was going to use Jaden ivy they would probably be in that lineup but i i really think it's it's the pricing and everything is probably a stay away and my guess would be after five days off they haven't played since sunday or four days off they're the only team that hasn't played we haven't talked about them once this week and they're the only team like that so this seems like the spot you would bring lebron back after all that time to me um but I, I, I think it's so. I, I think that all, all that making it, uh, the Lakers are probably not going to be the team for me today. And uh, it's kind of too bad. I like, I like that late, that late game. So I, just real quick to go through some of my plays. Yeah, take your time. Um, Halliburton as a, a, these are the spend ups. So well, I guess the priorities are at least one, probably two from Miami. At least one, probably two, and potentially more from from Denver. Um, then you get into the Halliburton, SGA, Giddy, SGA or Giddy, Jaw, Embiid, Booker, Payne or Bridges, one of the Knicks, and Clay are the priorities I have written down this early at this early look. Anything else sheets before we? Uh, yeah, it's, it's all that value and pick your pick your style just like just like usual. Yep, and uh, I will be live at at six Eastern. Sheets, are you gonna? Yeah, I'm with you. Oh, perfect, okay. awesome. All right. Well, uh, we'll see you guys at six Eastern then. Good luck. Stick, everybody. stick, stick around after you stop recording.